At the Uhuru Stadium, the articles of independence were handed by the Duke to the country's Prime Minister. We are commemorating today the 57th anniversary since our forefathers secured the right to be governed not as an appendage of the colonial enterprise but as a distinct and unique country. Before we could break away from the shackles of colonialism and form a state, we were anxious with a desire to decide how we wanted to run our homeland as a nation. It was an important victory, secured with blood and tears of our predecessors. What we have been struggling for is to redeem our country from the yoke of colonialism and imperialism. Besides observing this important milestone in our nation's history, Madaraka Day also serves as a moment of reflection. It is an ideal time to travel back the memory lane of the nation's dreams as envisioned by our founding fathers. It is an opportune time to take stock of our collective achievements as citizens of this country and not merely for self-praise, but as a constant reminder of our shared aspirations and obligations to make Kenya a truly better homeland. After Kenya attained independence, the most pressing challenge was in making a unified nation out of the multiplicities of ethnicities, races, and regions that formed the now independent Kenya. If I have done mistake to you, it's for you to forgive me. If you have done to me, I say it's for me to forgive you. Kenyatta had no intention whatsoever to look backwards. Kenya, let's come together. The new nation inherited a colonial economy that manifested the limitations that it was designed to serve. It displayed characteristics typical of an underdeveloped economy at the periphery, the preponderance of foreign capital, and limited development of industry. This meant that independent Kenya would have to work hard to improve on the existing infrastructural facilities such as communication, healthcare, energy supply, educational and financial institutions. In his first address, the founding father of the nation, Zejomo Kenyatta, made a solemn promise that the government would address the then three big challenges, namely poverty, ignorance, and disease. <laughs> to tackle these challenges, Mze Jomo Kenyatta's government initiated Sessional Paper No. 10 of 1965 that marked the stepping stone for Kenya's endeavors at attaining sustainable development. This plan was the cornerstone of Mze Kenyatta's 15 years tenure as it enabled his administration to implement the provisions of the sessional paper. Much was accomplished in the formative years, but a lot remained to be done for Kenya to achieve her declared goals. In education, primary school enrollment was increased and secondary school education expanded. 
This year, about 20 government-aided schools will be equipped with an additional class. Development processes will be expanded further by trebling the number of village polytechnics which will provide domestic science training for our young girls. More access to health care, higher life expectancy, and improved gross national income, as well as unprecedented technological growth, were also witnessed. In economic terms, decisive accomplishments were achieved, with everything pointing to rapid progress. In line with the socio-developmental policies that Mzee Kenyatta had put in place, President Moy made education reform the centerpiece of his administration on taking office in August 1978. When presiding over the November 1978 graduation ceremony at the University of Nairobi, the then Kenya's only public university, President Moy laid out his vision for university expansion. Within a short span, Moy University, Kenyatta University, Egerton University, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, and Maseno University were established to open new horizons of opportunity for those who would otherwise be deprived of higher education. Further, the education system was overhauled from the 7423 system to the 844 system, increasing primary school years from 7 to 8, eliminating the two years of advanced level in high school, thereby increasing university years from 3 to 4. When I introduced 844, there was you and cry here and there. Kijana akiingia katika university. Na ajui hata kutengeneza sanduku. Ajui jina la spana. Ajui jina la skuru. Sangapi atachivunza mambo ya juu ya university? Hali yangu jua yale ya madogo na basi yake itachukua kujifunza jina la square juu ya so juu ya yote ndio utapata engineer nusu nusu President Moy emphasized community mobilization on environmental conservation He spearheaded the building of gabions to prevent soil erosion and took part in the planting of trees to increase the country's forest cover. <laughs> to champion sports, the government built the Nyayo National Stadium in 1983 and the Moi International Sports Center Kasarani in 1987. This gave Kenya the opportunity to host the fourth All-Africa Games in 1987. In his inaugural address, President Kibaki prioritized constitutional reforms, the economy, unemployment, access to basic and affordable health services, expansion of roads, and other infrastructure networks. The promulgation of the Constitution on August 27, 2010, 
set off a series of reforms which established a number of independent institutions, including the Judiciary, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, the Transition Authority, the National Police Service, and the National Land Commission. In 2007, the Kenya Vision 2030 Economic Blueprint was launched, seeking to transform Kenya into a newly industrialized middle-income nation that was to provide high quality of life to its citizens by the year 2030. During this period, Kenya set a solid foundation for a fast economic takeoff through prioritization of key development projects and revival of collapsed industries. Numerous high-impact infrastructure projects were completed, others were work in progress, while many others were in commitment and planning stages. The government implemented road programs, including the remarkable thicker superhighway. The government is, is upgrading Nairobi thicker road at a total cost of about 28 billion shillings. In aviation, Kenya continued to make strides with President Kebaki opening the expanded Kisumu International Airport. In 2013, President Kebaki passed on the baton to President Uhuru Kenyatta. Having been elected under the new constitutional dispensation, President Kenyatta oversaw the rolling out of devolution. Under his administration, Kenya has experienced remarkable expansion in many sectors of our economy. The President has enhanced the scope and magnitude of his predecessor's infrastructural programs while undertaking new projects. Kuna wakati hii barabara ilikuwa mbaya hata wale wanabita hii barabara wanatoroka sasa tunabata biashara mingi biashara yetu yango mimi binafsi imekuwa sawa kabisa. His development blueprint is particularly informed by the nexus between investments in infrastructure and the economic growth of the country. President Kenyatta's government has invested heavily in energy, in an economy that is primarily driven by small and micro enterprises. Access to reliable, affordable energy is an important business enabler. The last mile connectivity project has greatly impacted the lives of many Kenyans through lighting of homes, business premises, streets, schools, markets, and social places. Salama yikuwa mzuri kwa sababu kulikuwa nagiza kwanza pale roundabout walikuwa nashika watu waki wanyonga. But ulikuwa nashukuru kwa hizi lights kwa sababu zimituraisishia kazi. Ata sa hizi unizafunga late kwa sababu una hofu. The government has further made heavy investment in renewable energy, including geothermal, solar and wind. The president launched a 50 megawatt solar plant in Garissa, further increasing the share of renewable energy to the grid. The standard gauge railway has enhanced the country's capacity to evacuate cargo from the port 
and deliver. Moving of bulk cargo on the SGR has also added longevity to our roads by sparing them from wear and tear. It has provided faster, cost-effective, and more convenient passenger service between Nairobi and Mombasa. Elephants in the olives. Wakati unatumia train, ukoshua the time of departure, na ukoshua the time of arrival. So you can plan your time very well, especially if you are coming for a business trip. The ongoing expansion of the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, the construction of the Lamo Port, the drenching of Mombasa Port, and rehabilitation of Kisumu Port will enhance their capacity and competitiveness, making Kenya an important regional and international hub. Nikuwa bado niko chini sana kimaisha kule nyumbani kwa naendelea mambo ya kutafuta tafuta kazi maotelini vile Lakini niliposikia tu yu kuna yu project nikaamua kuja kutafuta kazi Hii kazi nizuri imetuinua kimaisha Kenya's blue economy contributes a mere 2.5% of our GDP in absolute terms Meaning approximately 180 billion Kenya shillings the government has invested further in the blue economy, which has led to the establishment of the Kenya Coast Guard Service to enforce maritime security and safety. The repossession and improvement of fish landing jetties and the establishment of Bandari Maritime Academy are some of the investments and reforms being undertaken to exploit the vast resources in our waters. Our security forces have undergone expansion and modernization. This has seen the acquisition of modern equipment, gender mainstreaming, and the establishment of new camps and stations. All these efforts have improved professionalism and multi-agency collaboration in providing security for Kenyans against internal and external threats. During President Uhuru Kenyatta's administration, the free primary education, free day secondary school programs, and the 100% transition from primary to secondary school have ensured that every Kenyan child has access to education. Massive investments in technical vocational education and training institutes are providing more opportunities for the acquisition of skills tailored for the job market. The government has rolled out the competency-based curriculum that aims at nurturing every learner's potential and equipping them with skills that enable them become engaged, empowered, and ethical citizens. Ma. Ma. Na. Na. Pa. Pa. Ra. President Kenyatta has consistently urged Kenyans to reject corruption and stick to accountability and integrity as the only way to sustainably drive Kenya to greater heights. I want to renew my pledge to you on this fight. I will not turn to the left or right. I will not soft pedal or back pedal, nor be intimidated. Agencies tasked with the mandate to fight graft have been given adequate resources and equipped with the capacity to tackle the war on corruption. The housing pillar under the Big Four agenda targets helping citizens to access decent, affordable houses in tandem with the institutionalization of incentives that aim to encourage more private investment in housing. 
The government, through a raft of reforms to improve our food security, has initiated programs that champion value addition and ensure more money trickles down to the farmers as they feed the nation. These interventions by the government are yielding fruits in dairy, rice, coffee, tea, and potato farming. Positive impact on the local manufacturing industry, such as the establishment of special economic zones, are benefiting the rail and road infrastructure, lower energy tariffs, business-friendly tax regime, and other incentives that have encouraged more investments. The implementation of the universal health care has led to the provision of quality and affordable services to Mwananchi across the country. The wide-ranging expansion of the National Hospital Insurance Fund means that more Kenyans can now access medical care. Kwa sasa hivi niko hapa kwetu Lamu eh hospitali yetu inaitwa King Fahad. Kwa sasa hivi hatutumii zile gharama za kulipa cash tunatumia card NHF. Yenye nilikuja clinic siku ya kwanza nidiambio ni apply ni ka apply we are committed to contribute to the President's vision for universal health care by conducting these medical safaris around the country. I'm confident that this initiative will enhance the government's agenda for universal health care by providing access to all Kenyans. We have committed to leave no one behind. Jointly, the national government and the county governments have worked together in the expansion and modernization of health facilities across the country, enabling Kenyans access specialized medical services in the counties. In the last 57 years, Kenya has come full circle. We have faced challenges, but as a nation, we have rallied together to overcome them. In the spirit of Pamoja to Songembele, it is your responsibility and mine to protect ourselves and others around us by taking appropriate precautionary measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Let us be guided by the words of our national anthem. Tungane mikono pamoja kazini, kila siku tuwe na shukrani. Yetu, hey, hey,